Hi guys, I hope you're all doing good. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to prove the soundness theorem for tree proofs. Hello everyone, welcome to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago, I'm a philosophy lecturer in the UK. So recently on the channel, we've been talking about the tree proof method for proving arguments in logic, and recently talking about how we reason about the tree proof method, how good or how bad it works. In this video, I'm gonna be looking specifically how we go about proving the soundness theorem. Okay, so if that sounds good to you, do me a favor, give this video a thumbs up, and while you're here, why not subscribe to the channel? So in the previous video, I talked you through how we go from the standard statement of soundness, if you prove something, then it's a genuine entailment, to this manipulated version where we're just talking about satisfiable sets of sentences. Okay, so this statement comes out as, if we've got a set of sentences that's satisfiable, then doing a tree test starting with those sentences, that tree isn't gonna close. So that's what we're gonna try to prove today, right? We're gonna try and prove if you start a tree with a satisfiable set of sentences, that tree's not going to close. Okay, so how do we prove that a tree isn't gonna close? How do we give ourselves a guarantee that the tree isn't gonna close? Well, the key here is to think about what does it take for a tree to close, okay? The only way a tree can close is if all the branches close. And when does a branch close? Well, when you put an X at the bottom. And when can you put an X at the bottom of a branch? Well, either when you've got an A and a not A on the branch, or when you've got a non-identity statement of the form A doesn't equal A. In either case, what you've got along that branch is an unsatisfiable set of sentences, okay? So if you're applying this rule, the only way you can apply that rule, putting the X at the bottom of a branch, is with an unsatisfiable set of sentences. Because if you've got those, or you've got that, whatever else you've got on the branch, it's not satisfiable. If you put the X there, you've got some unsatisfiable stuff. Contraposing, if you've got satisfiable stuff, then you can't put the X. And if you can't put the X, then that tree's guaranteed not to close. So what we're gonna try and show is that if we start with a satisfiable set of sentences at the top, then we keep a satisfiable set of sentences as the tree develops. Now, we know that sometimes a branch might close even if the tree as a whole isn't gonna close, okay? So it's not like we always have to keep every branch of a tree satisfiable. What we need is if we start with a set of sentences at the top that's satisfiable, then as we go down the tree, at least one branch is satisfiable. So if we start our tree off with some sentences up the top, and if this lot is satisfiable, then as we develop the tree, yeah, maybe some branches close here and here, but this one goes like this. Okay, maybe that one closes, but at least one branch has to be satisfiable. Okay, that's what we're trying to show. And we can do this in a step-by-step -step way because Every branch that we get as we develop this tree comes from applying some rule or other, right? So we've got a rule applied here, a rule applied here, a rule applied here and here, and so on. So we're gonna do this one rule at a time. We're gonna show that every rule has the following property. If the branch that you apply it to is satisfiable before you apply the rule, then the branch is satisfiable after you apply the rule. Okay, or in the case of a branching rule, we're gonna say that if the branch is satisfiable before you apply the rule here, then at least one branch is satisfiable after you apply the rule. So here I'm talking about the satisfiability of a branch, saying that branch is satisfiable. What I really mean is if we look up the branch, the set of sentences that we get on that branch. So all of these sentences that we find, including those that we start with, is satisfiable. Okay, so it's really sets of sentences that are satisfiable or not, but I'm just gonna keep it simple and talk about branches being satisfiable or not. 
So what we're going to try and show is if we've got a satisfiable branch before we apply the rule, then at least one of the resulting branches is satisfiable after we apply that rule. And we're going to show that on a rule by rule basis. So typically we might say that a rule is sound when it has this property. So like that rule's sound, that rule's not sound. And the tree test as a whole is sound if every rule involved in it is sound. Basically, the same thing would go for any proof system, right? So if we're talking about natural deduction, if we're proving soundness, we would look at every rule in turn and show that each individual rule is sound and say the whole system is sound when all the rules are, okay? But this particular method we're looking at here, when we're looking about the satisfiability of branches, that's specific to the tree test. So to give the full soundness proof, what we've got to do is we've got to look at every single tree rule and go through each one in turn and say, yep, that one's sound, yep, that one's sound, that one's sound, and so on. And soundness proofs are always like this. They're always really repetitive and kind of boring and uh, yeah. So I'm not going to go through every single case here because once you've seen two of them, like the non-branching case and the branching case, pretty much all of the other ones are the same. OK, so what I want to do is show you those two cases and leave you guys to figure out all the other cases because they're going to be like one or other of those cases, depending on whether it's a branching or a non-branching rule. So if you're reading a logic paper or a logic textbook and the author is proving soundness for their for their system, pretty much what you always see is they'll say, here are a few cases of these rules being sound and I'm going to leave the other cases for the reader, basically meaning I can't be asked to write out all of these, you guys do it. So I'm going to show you how it works for the AND rule and for the OR rule. So we've got one case of a non-branching rule, one case of a branching rule. So let's do the case for the AND rule. How do we do it? Well, if we're going to apply the AND rule, that means we've got a branch. Let's call it branch B. And somewhere on it, it's got a sentence A and B. We're trying to show that if all the sentences on that branch are satisfiable now, before we apply the rule, then they're going to be satisfiable after we apply the rule in the new branch. OK, so we're going to assume that the sentences on B are satisfiable. If we apply the AND rule, what do we do? Well, we get to this point here and then we extend the branch. So let's call this extended branch B+. Plus. We want to show that the sentences that we now have, all of the sentences that we have on this extended branch, B+, plus, are satisfiable. OK, so all of the sentences, the old ones plus the new ones, are satisfiable. Let's see how we do that. So since we applied the AND rule, what we've added to the branch is A and B. So we have to show that all of those sentences are satisfiable. But that's kind of easy, right? Because on the assumption that this bit's satisfiable, that means that there's a model that makes all of those sentences true. In particular, the model makes A and B true. But if it makes A and B true, by the truth conditions for AND, it also makes A true and it makes B true. So we could write this out by saying, by assumption, by the assumption that branch B is satisfiable, there is this model M and it satisfies all the sentences on branch B. In particular, it satisfies the sentence A and B. So M satisfies A and M satisfies B. So what we've learned there is that M satisfies all the sentences on branch B+, plus, the branch that we got by applying the AND rule. So good. We've done that case. We've shown that the AND rule is sound. If the branch was satisfiable before we applied the AND rule, then the resulting branch is satisfiable after we applied the AND rule. OK, now let's look at the other kind of case, a branching rule. So we take a rule like disjunction, A or B. So this is going to be really similar to the AND case, apart from we're going to have to deal with branching. So let's see how it goes. If we get to apply the disjunction rule, then that means we started off with a branch. Let's call that branch B and it's got A or B on it. That's what we must have if we've applied the disjunction rule. OK, so we're going to assume that B is satisfiable and we're going to try to establish that after we apply the rule, at least one branch is satisfiable. 
So if we apply the disjunction rule to A or B, what we would do is extend the branch, we get A on the left, and we get B on the right. OK, so now we're talking about two potential branches that we're going to have to check for satisfiability. We've got this one over on the left here, and we've got this one over here on the right. So let's call the one on the left B1 and the one on the right B2. So B1 is all of this up here and B2 is all of this up here. How do we show that at least one of them is satisfiable? Well, let's follow what we did in the case of AND. Since this slot is satisfiable, then there is some model M that makes all the sentences on that branch true. In particular, it makes true A or B. And by the truth condition for or, that means that that particular model either makes A true or it makes B true. Incidentally, I'm talking here about models, so we're in first order logic. If we were talking about propositional logic, it would be exactly the same, but we would have valuations instead of models. OK, so if it's the first case and our model makes A true, then that means that all of these sentences up here are true. They're made true by model M, so M satisfies all the sentences on branch B1. On the other hand, if M makes B true, then that branch, B2, is satisfiable. We don't know which it might be one, it might be the other, it might be both, and we don't care. All we need to show is that at least one of those branches is satisfiable, and this proof does it. Now, this is a non-constructive proof, right? It's not telling us which branch is satisfiable, it's just telling us that at least one of them is satisfiable. So if we were doing intuitionistic reasoning, intuitionistic meta-logic, where we ban non-constructive proofs, this step wouldn't be any good for our purposes. But look, we're just going to do classical meta-reasoning here. We're going to allow non-constructive proofs. So we're going to say, OK, fine, I, I don't know which branch is satisfiable, but at least one of them is. That's going to be enough for me to guarantee that this tree isn't going to close. OK, guys, so that is how we establish the soundness theorem for the tree test. We go through each rule in turn and we show that if a branch is satisfiable before we apply the rule, then it stays satisfiable, or at least one of the resulting branches is satisfiable after we apply the rule. The two cases I showed you are pretty simple, are pretty quick. All of the connective cases, you know, and or not, if then, I like that. The cases for the quantifiers in first order logic, they're a little bit more involved, but you know, it will be good for you to think through those. So have a go at those. That will push you a little bit. Thank you so much for watching this far. I'm going to be continuing this series. So in the next video, I'm going to be going through how we establish the completeness theorem for tree proofs. So if you've got any questions on this, leave me a comment down below. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you back here soon. <laughs>